guys, there is absolutely no reason to be fighting. We don't need to have split custody. We love you all. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for the support. On my channel, I like to give my opinion and perspective on things that are happening today, things that I think actually matter to everyday people, especially those of us trying to raise kids in the insanity known as today's society. I do like to talk about current events and politics, and my perspective does tend to be more on the conservative side of things. Uh, please like this video, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure you are subscribed. All of these things will help me to grow my channel to hopefully reach more people that value logic, reason, and sanity. Also, be sure to head over to Rumble and find me there. Uh, in the event that YouTube decides I have violated their communist, I mean community standards, and chooses to kick me off their platform forever. That being said, let's get into today's topic. So as you can tell by the thumbnail, um, I do want to just briefly just offer my thoughts on this whole situation between Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire and just kind of from a viewer's perspective, from those of us that are just bystanders just watching this whole mess unfold, what I'm sure a you know, quite a few of us are thinking, and of course you can leave your additional thoughts in the comments because I really am interested in everybody's perspective on what this looks like from the outside looking in. So, I mean, I admit that I was a little bit surprised when Steven Crowder announced, uh, I believe it was in December, that he was leaving the blaze. And I actually have a friend whose dad is a commentator on blaze tv so i text him and i i was like do you have any idea what's going on here like did something happen is there something bad going down he didn't have any information unfortunately um i'm sure a lot of that is confident confidential and stephen crowder obviously hasn't been able to speak out probably because of non-disclosure agreements as to why uh he decided to leave the blaze after his contract ended but so the blaze has been been pretty silent on this whole thing you know <laughs> they're like He's leaving us, so you know we don't really have anything to say about this. As long as as long as long as no one drags our name into this, you know we're we're just gonna kind of stay out of it. So now, of course, what what I didn't know because Ben Shapiro shared a video basically of the timeline of how all of this unfolded was that these talks and discussions actually started at the beginning. These talks and discussions between Stephen Crowder and the Daily Wire actually started at the beginning of October. So this has been going on for a couple of months. And, you know, it's, I don't need to go into all the details about the things that were negotiated and said in the meetings. Um, I, I know that a lot of us have seen a lot of the videos. And initially when I saw Steven Crowder's first videos talking about this, I did more, you know, side with him. When you only get one side of the story, uh, you tend to immediately side with that person. And I appreciated that he, from what it seemed like, he was really concerned about what this might look like, what these kind of contracts might look like for up and coming talent and making sure that they had the flexibility to grow. And that they weren't being beholden to some of these bigger companies um, with, and being left with nothing essentially uh, once they decided to uh, move on to greener pastures essentially. Um, I'm not entirely sure that that's what the daily the, the contract at the Daily Wire would do but as I've heard from other commentators you know that have offered insight into this whole situation every contract with the Daily Wire as with other companies other organizations is going to be different depending on the experience and what this person has to bring to the channel uh, somebody like Brett Cooper who is on the Daily Wire who is very young it, her and has only been in this space for a short time her contract is going to look very different than somebody like Steven Crowder who has a you know one of the biggest bases if not the biggest fan base in the conservative space so um, you know so I appreciated him wanting to bring that to our attention I do think that he was coming from a very emotional emotional place um, and you know that he he did have legitimate concerns for what that would look like um, then, of course, you know, Jeremy Boring got on and went through the whole contract line by line about what they offered, which I think is kind of a questionable move. And then Ben Shapiro recently released a video explaining the entire timeline of how things unfolded. And he really didn't have a whole lot to say until he until he felt that Steven Crowder was attacking Jeremy Boring personally. And then he, you know, felt like he needed to stand up for his best friend. And then Candace Owens got on there and, you know, kind of called Steven Crowder out because essentially by slinging mud at all of the da Daily Wire, even without naming names specifically about who was involved, 
he essentially was slinging mud at the organization uh, as a whole. So it's just a lot that's going on and I so you know I saw Stephen Carter's videos and then I saw um, I watched an entire video of Lauren Chen she broke it down from a very neutral perspective as somebody who has you know experience with getting offers from places like the Daily Wire and the Blaze and then ultimately choosing to maintain you know her independent channel um, and not working for these bigger organizations and then Mark Dice offered some great insight and then Tim Pool, sorry, I almost forgot his last name. Tim Pool had a really great analysis as well. So, you know, the, I think it's important to get a perspective from everybody, not just the people that are, um, that have a dog in the fight, that have, you know, a vested interest or, you know, a stake in what's happening here. I do like listening to people that are on the outside looking in um, to get just kind of an overall more comprehensive understanding. So, but as a viewer from the outside looking in, everything that I have gathered from the situation, I understand Stephen Crowder's concerns. Um, but at the same time, the reason that I put the thumbnail up that I did that Steven Crowder is behaving like the Meghan Markle of conservative media is because ultimately at the end of the day, I feel like all of this could have been handled without trashing the Daily Wire. Uh, somebody that is in the same space trying to accomplish the same goal uh, with the same mission in mind of trying to preserve, like I said, the foundation of our country, to remind people of what our principles are, to spread this message of liberty and freedom, and to keep our country from going under <laughs> in tyranny. And we all have this common goal. We are all trying to share this message again. I say we like you know, I'm part of these these big guys. Um, but that's that's the goal when you're trying to put yourself out there and you're trying to call out the things that are happening in this country so that people are aware of it, the things that are not being covered by the mainstream media, um, that that's the goal. Like we're all, we all have this common goal in general. And those of us, you know, for, as a viewership, we're gonna support people like Steven Crowder. We're gonna support The Daily Wire. We're gonna support The Blaze. We're gonna support people that we feel are getting that message out there most effectively. And I think that all of this could have been accomplished, like I said, without dragging The Daily Wire through the mud. I think ultimately, from what it sounds like, you know, Steven Crowder really didn't get very far into the negotiations before he determined that he was gonna turn this around and make it sound like um, The Daily Wire were, was being a lot more shady about their business dealings uh, than we were aware of. I thought that was just a, kind of a really crappy thing to do. Um, also, you know, recording calls with Jeremy Boring, I think that was kind of, that was, that took things just a little bit too far. And the reason I compare this to Meghan Markle is I feel that in a lot of ways, you know, regardless of what the beef, beefs are that Meghan Markle and Harry have with the royal family, there's so much of this stuff that I feel like if they really, truly were interested in reconciliation and having common ground that they could have handled privately with conversations, uh, giving the other side a chance to respond and handling this um, on a, on a private basis um so to to come to the you know to come out publicly with it um with doing things like recording phone calls and then as he bought the domain for this website called stop the big con and accusing the daily wire of being more in the pockets of big tech than um on the side of the conservative movement i think that that was really kind of not a great move not a great thing to do um so it, that's why i compared him to megan markle in this situation um but like i said i think a lot of this could have been handled just in the negotiations in the talks and at the end of the day the beautiful beautiful thing about capitalism is he could have said you know what this isn't going to work for me um these are not the terms that i feel are beneficial to me and i think i'm going to um just create my own independent organization and in doing so because he's got a big enough base he's got enough resources to do it he could create the kind of organization that he thinks would be beneficial especially to up-and-coming talent to these you know people that are new to the space to provide the kind of opportunity that he feels the Daily Wire isn't offering people and he is welcome to do that and that would be an amazing thing to do and I truly hope that that's where he takes his next steps in business and yes without the you know the backing of the Daily Wire it'll probably be a little bit slow of a growth but again he has got the base he's got the support 
I don't see, I, I'm still failing to see what the benefit was to going public with all of these things and dragging the Daily Wire through the mud when he was never, you know, beholden to them. He was never obligated to sign anything. He wasn't being forced into anything. He had the freedom to simply walk away and say, this offer isn't going to work for me. One thing that I do think was kind of, that's been kind of positive about bringing all this to light is that for people that are hoping to get into this space, um, you know, myself included, I, I don't really know how big my channel's ever going to be um, or, you know, if I can ever dream of somebody like the Daily Wire or the Blaze even noticing that my channel exists, but, you know, one can dream, um, that if I were to go into negotiations with things, I would I would have had no idea that this, ha if this is how things work. And I think it's going to give people, especially these younger people coming into this space and creating channels and trying to get their voice out there, um, that if this opportunity does present themselves, that they know to go to bat for themselves, to advocate for themselves, um, what terms are and may or may not be fair and to go in and um, you know fight for terms that they do feel are just and fair um, so I think that that has opened up a really important conversation especially as this uh, you know, this space is constantly evolving and growing um, and changing and, you know, no two uh, days look the same that, you know, we're able to talk about hey, how do we want to be productive in this space? How do we, what do we want it to look like? How can we best protect uh, commentators and people that are advocates of free speech? Uh, how can we protect those rights and their speech going forward, especially at, with these bigger organizations that have the resources to do so? To do so. so those are just my thoughts. Um, I do wish Steven Crowder the best. I will continue to support him and watch his channel as I will, like I said, everybody else. You know, I love the things that they say and I hope that this whole thing settles down and that they are able to reconcile in some ways because, um, you know, <laughs> the last thing that we need right now is more conflict, especially amongst conservatives because I don't know about you guys, but I truly appreciate uh, the conservative movement and conservative voices in the sense that we do tend to be able to have conversations without conflict, without tearing each other down and without insulting each other and trying to trash each other. Um, so I hope that that's what we can continue to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, I have noticed that I've been getting a lot more viewership lately, but a lot of you aren't subscribed and you really should ask yourself why. Why? Hmm? Um, so please subscribe to my channel. Help me to grow this channel. Also hit the notification bell so that you can hear, uh, get a notification every time I post a video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.